you've been lied to. Every doomsday documentary, every clickbait YouTube channel, every Hollywood disaster movie has been feeding you the same beautiful fiction. They show you dramatic scenes of nuclear EMPs, terrorist attacks with suitcase bombs, or some vague grid failure that happens in a neat 90 minutes for narrative convenience. They call it science. I call it profitable ignorance wrapped in stock footage. Because here's what they don't tell you. When civilization-ending blackouts actually happen, when 93 million people lose power simultaneously, when entire countries go dark for weeks, it's not because of the dramatic garbage they're selling you. The real threats are invisible, they're interconnected, and they operate at scales your brain wasn't designed to comprehend. Most of those Hollywood scenarios? Pure fantasy, designed to sell movie tickets and survival supplements. But there's a truth in here that'll keep you listening. There are exactly three mechanisms that can actually cause a worldwide blackout. Three scientifically proven, historically documented threats that make a nuclear EMP like a child science fair project. And I guarantee the last one on this list is something 90% of people completely misunderstand, including most of the scientists who should know better. This isn't about what feels scary. It's about what physics, history, and mathematics tell us will eventually happen again. The invisible threat. The 93 million person darkness. Before we get to the mechanisms, you need to understand what makes our civilization uniquely vulnerable. Our great-grandparents lived in a world where electricity was a convenience, a luxury. We live in a world where electricity is the foundation of literally everything. Water treatment, fuel distribution, food refrigeration, communication, banking, hospitals, manufacturing, all of it. The 2003 Northeast blockout affected 50 million people for just four days and caused up to $10 billion in economic damage. Four days. Now imagine months. Imagine the entire eastern seaboard. That's not science fiction. That's the documented threat level we're operating under right now. And the first mechanism that can trigger this isn't hiding in some shadowy terrorist network. It's hiding 93 million miles away. Threat 1. The solar apocalypse nobody's preparing for. September 1, 1859. The English astronomer Richard Carrington is in his private observatory outside London, documenting sunspots like he does every day. Then something happens that's never been recorded before. Two patches of intensely bright white light erupt from the sun's surface. He is witnessing history, the largest solar storm ever documented, the Carrington event. Just 18 hours later, that solar explosion slams into Earth's magnetic field with the force of billions of nuclear weapons. Telegraph systems worldwide start sparking, catching fire, shocking their operators. Some systems continue operating without any power source at all, driven purely by the geomagnetic currents induced in the wires. The entire planet sees auroras, in Cuba, in Hawaii. Gold miners in the Rocky Mountains wake up at one in the morning thinking it's dawn because the sky is glowing so brightly. Now here's why this matters to you. That was 1859. We had telegraph wires and gas lamps. Today, we have 200,000 miles of high voltage transmission lines, 55,000 substations, and an electrical grid that serves as the literal nervous system of civilization. A Carrington Mahal event today wouldn't just knock out your Wi-Fi. It would destroy the fundamental infrastructure that generates and transmits electricity. Here's the physics that should terrify you. When that coronal mass ejection hits Earth's magnetosphere, it creates something called geomagnetically induced currents. These aren't normal electric they are massive, uncontrolled surges that flow through the ground itself and into anything metal and conductive, like our high voltage transformers. Those transformers are the multi ton workhorses of the grid, designed to handle normal electrical loads. They are not designed to handle 100 ampere ground currents flowing directly through their cores. What happens next is permanent, catastrophic transformer failure. The cores saturate, they overheat, they literally melt. And here's the nightmare that keeps grid operators awake at night. These aren't components you can just order on Amazon. Each large transformer is custom built, takes 12 to 18 months to manufacture, and costs millions of dollars. When they fail, you can't repair them. You have to replace them. And if a Carrington-level event takes out hundreds of these transformers simultaneously across 15 states, you're not looking at days without power. You're looking at years. The last time this almost happened was July 23, 2012. A Carrington-class solar storm erupted from the sun and missed Earth by nine days of orbital rotation. Nine days. If it had hit us, scientists estimate the economic damage would be between $600 billion and $2.6 trillion dollars. 
20 to 40 million Americans would be without power for one to two years. Lloyds of London ran the numbers. They are not optimists. But solar storms are an act of nature. The second threat? That's human-made, and it's already been successfully deployed. Threat two, the 90-second collapse. December 23, 2015, Ukraine. Power company operators watch their computer screens as their own control systems begin activating circuit breakers one by one. Except they're not touching anything. The commands are coming from malware that's been sitting dormant in their systems for months. In 90 seconds, a virus called Industrior methodically shuts down substations across multiple regions. 225,000 people lose power. This isn't theoretical. It's not a simulation. This is the first confirmed cyber attack to successfully cause a power outage. Russian intelligence agencies proved you can shut down a nation's power grid with code. And here's what should concern you more than the attack itself. It worked. And they learned from it. In 2016, they did it again. Better. Stealthier. More targeted. In 2022, during the Ukraine invasion, they attempted to combine kinetic strikes with cyber warfare to take down the entire Ukrainian grid simultaneously. Now let's talk about your power grid. The U.S. electrical infrastructure is a 100-year-old network that's been upgraded with digital controls bolted onto analog systems. It's 3,300 different utilities trying to coordinate through 200,000 miles of transmission lines. The attack surface is enormous. Lloyd's developed a plausible scenario for a coordinated cyber attack on the Eastern Interconnection. The hypothetical malware targets just 10% of power generators, just 10%. That's enough to cause cascading failures across 15 states and the District of Columbia. 93 million people without power. Economic damage, $243 billion. Recovery time, weeks, possibly months as authorities would have to slowly and carefully verify every single compromised system before daring to reconnect it to the grid. The malware doesn't have to destroy every transformer or cut every wire. It just has to push the system past its breaking point and let physics do the rest. Which brings us to the third threat, the one that can start with a single tree branch touching a single power line in Ohio and end with 50 million people in the dark. Threat three the physics of instant collapse. August 14, 2003, 4.10 p.m. Eastern Time. A high-voltage transmission line in Ohio, sagging from the afternoon heat, brushes against a tree and shorts out. One line. In five minutes, 50 million people lose power across eight states and parts of Canada. This is cascading failure, and it's the least understood, most inevitable threat to modern power grids. Here's what actually happens and why it's almost impossible to stop. Power grids operate in a delicate, constant balance. Generation must exactly match consumption, second by second. When one transmission line fails, the massive electrical load it was carrying has to go somewhere. Instantly, it redistributes to neighboring lines. But those lines, which were already operating near capacity, suddenly get hit with a tidal wave of additional current. The physics here is brutal and instantaneous. As the load increases, more current flows. More current means more heat. More heat means the metal conductors expand and sag. If they sag into trees or get too close to the ground, they short out and their protective relays trip them offline. Now multiple lines are down and their combined load shifts to other lines in a cascading wave that moves faster than any human operator can possibly respond. Look at the European blackout of 2006. 33 high voltage transmission lines tripped in 80 seconds. 30 of them failed in the first 19 seconds. Think about that. 19 seconds from a single initial failure to a cascading collapse affecting millions of people. Here's the mathematical nightmare. Simulations of the current US grid structure show that the failure of just 2% of transmission substations can cause a cascade resulting in the loss of 60% of all power connectivity. 2% triggering 60%. That is not a robust system. That is a system operating on the absolute edge of catastrophic failure every single day. The reality that nobody wants to admit is you cannot prevent cascading failures. You can only try to prevent the initial conditions. But those initial conditions include trees growing, equipment aging, weather happening, and humans making mistakes. Eventually, the conditions align. Eventually, the cascade starts. And when it does, the speed of failure will always exceed the speed of human intervention. So there it is, three mechanisms. 
solar storms that can melt our essential transformers, turning them into permanent boat anchors. Cyber attacks that can trigger coordinated widespread failures from a keyboard halfway around the world. And the fundamental physics of a cascading collapse that can turn one tiny failure into a systematic shutdown in seconds. This isn't about Hollywood EMPs. It isn't about terrorist fantasies. This is about physics, documented history, and mathematical inevitability. The question isn't if one of these will cause another massive blackout. The question is when, and whether we'll be operating under conditions that make it last for days, instead of for months or even years. The light switch on your wall is connected to the most complex machine ever built, and it's more fragile than you could ever imagine.